Okay, this is the, the money tree you will have seen me draw and I'm just gonna do a couple of, there are about three faces on here uh, just to get going um, and to show you quite how I go about thinking about it. I've had terrible trouble printing out pictures. I don't know why, but my printer is kind of solarizing the, the photos. Anyway, um, here we have Freddie who started the whole thing. He said, why don't you draw a money tree? Um, and he's paid his ten dollars and <laughs> he is going to be in the center because he started the whole thing off. And I'm not going to use my pen. I'm going to use a pencil. And I am going to draw him as a president because that's what he wants to be. And so I'm kind of looking at the shapes here. I'm kind of looking here. You've got this very kind of square, kind of boxy kind of shape there. So that's what I'm picking out. And I haven't got much room either, so I've got to really think about the size of how this is going to be. Uh, and that's kind of very much going out there. Like this. And I want to be leaving myself room to do all the presidential bit, because I'm going to give him a bow tie, like, <laughs> and a kind of a high collar, uh, like um, Abraham Lincoln or someone like that. And I can't talk and concentrate, that's, quite, that's the hard part. Thing that goes around, a round little thing that goes kind of like that. <laughs> and then we want to see here, this is going to say $22. That's what he wants his note to be. <laughs> 22 is Freddie's lucky number. So I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, going on dyslexic there, and I'm going to do and twenty two. And uh, now, normally I use a point three or a point four uh, rotary tachygraphic. This time I'm using a point two because this is quite tight, small drawing. I want to kind of get kind of quite a lot of detail, in, so I'm going to use a, a finer um, point. So I think this presidential kind of photo is going to look quite formal. It's very hard to talk and concentrate. <laughs> so you've got a bit of concentrating on this. Uh, a little... So this all started, um, I, I had a series of kind of email things from YouTuber just in case he was talking about making money on as an artist. And, um, and I, the next video that I did was how to draw a tree in a Narnia style. And then Freddie says, ha ha ha, why don't you draw a money tree? And I thought, actually, this is a, a good point to show how you can make money as an artist but you know you have to have ideas <laughs> and so my instant idea as soon as Freddie said that was I could see drawing a money tree and I can see having lots of little pound little notes on here and I thought each piece will each note people could buy and they could have themselves immortalized on the money tree and um and I thought that would be quite funny it's proved to be I, I don't know, this is where it comes down to marketing, you see. So I think, I thought it would sell out really, really quickly. There are, as I speak, there are five slots left. If you want to be immortalized like this, <laughs> you can. It's only gonna cost you $10, which is nothing. It really is nothing. You know, coming up with an idea is part of the thing. Um, marketing then is a really difficult thing. Um, so I think somehow, first of all, I think, the first mistake I made was now the first marketing mistake I made was I don't think it was a mistake because I think most of my 
viewers are in the States and so I chose to be paid in dollars. I thought ten dollars sounded kind of a good price and um, so uh, so I made it in ten dollars so immediately people say oh I can't pay in dollars well you can pay in dollars it's very easy you just you just go on PayPal and you you pay whatever you like uh, in, a, in whatever currency you happen to live in uh, the country that you live in um, it will be fine because it just uh, automatically converts it into ten dollars and so that was one thing so I didn't explain I think and part of marketing is explaining to people exactly what it is you're trying to do so maybe I didn't quite explain that properly anyway it doesn't matter where you live in the world this is only going to cost you ten dollars and but you can pay in your local currency you go on to PayPal you, you click you click the thingy here you go to my website where you will find the button you'll find the payment button and uh, you pay in your own currency and it gets converted into dollars so it's not a problem for you and um, and then it gets converted into sterling for me <laughs> it's just the wonder of the internet this is one of the things I wanted to explain how simple it is to, to do this kind of thing internationally now marketing as well what else did I get wrong I don't know um, I think I think it, you need to be really, really simple and really. Exp it's not that people are stupid, <laughs> because, because I know you're, you're my viewers and you're not stupid. It's, it's just making it obvious, um, or it's not making it obvious. It's not making it complicated, and I think maybe I complicate things a bit too much sometimes. Um, and I think when you complicate things. Um, and people kind of switch off too much information um, so <laughs> maybe I'm guilty of giving too much information sometimes and I should just do much shorter videos and just think what do I want to teach in this one video and just concentrate on that one thing but it's, uh, uh, it's difficult teaching yourself to think that way so anyway what I wanted to say, what I wanted to do with this whole thing was to show that out of nowhere, out of a tiny, simple idea, a silly throwaway phrase, hey, why not draw a money tree? And uh, I'd have made $200 out of that simple, simple little idea. And I hope, <laughs> I hope 20 people would have kind of felt they'd been part of something quite fun. And, um, and have enjoyed seeing themselves being painted and everyone else will be feeling oh I missed out on that I could have been there <laughs> so this could be you here it's only ten dollars which is about five pounds eighty five in the UK or I think six pounds six euros or something six six seven euros something like that so there's Freddie from his strangely solarized photograph president of the united states but well, you never know he might become become president one day <laughs> i think freddie wants to be a history teacher actually and freddie has been commenting and following my channel for a very very long time now and next we have Terry Lev from Sacramento who wants to be drawn as a queen <laughs> on a hundred dollar bill and I've got to leave room for a kind of a crown there. And so I'm going to have her kind of like that. So she's got a very kind of diamond shaped face here. And I'm going to have that crown. And obviously these glasses are the most important thing here. So, so with all these, I'm going to make them slightly bigger than they probably are. And with all these things, you kind of want to really pick out the, the uh, you know, the, the main thing. And obviously with Terry here, it's the glasses. And 
So that's what I'm immediately honing in on. And her hair is kind of falling down like this. She says she's been drawing about eight years and painting about eight years. And she's going to want, you know, necklaces and... Well, let's make her kind of like Queen Elizabeth I with <laughs> great big ruffs and things like that. How does that work? I'm trying to think now. So if I want a bit rough, I'll kind of go like that, isn't it? Yeah. Good. And then she wanted it to be a hundred dollars, didn't she? Okay, so I'm going to put one hundred in there, like that. Okay, so let me zoom in on this a bit now. This wants to come down a little bit there more. Oh, I'm going to experiment a little bit here. So she's got a very smiley face. And so I'm going to draw. And so we want a little bit of kind of ermine around the top of the crown. Oh, Terry, I can't believe it. My memory card f ran out and I was concentrating so hard I didn't, didn't hear it beep. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but anyway, I've done your painting. But uh, I'll do a little bit more. And uh, I think I did quite a lot of talking as well. Um, but I can't remember what it was. I think I was talking about perfectionism and how... It's easy to get bogged down in thinking, oh, this has to be absolutely perfect. But, you know, if you're a professional, and I think this is kind of one of the things that marks out a professional artist, is um, you kind of have to learn when to stop. <laughs> because otherwise, you know, you just keep working and working and working, and you, every extra hour that you spend on a job, then your hourly rate is going down. And, you know, many, <laughs> many professional artists work underneath below national agreed, you know, poverty limits and things like that because they just keep going and they don't stop. And um, I think it's, it, I think that is one of artists' big problems. I think that they just don't know when to stop. And it's because they think it has to be absolutely perfect, whereas the person who's like to buy it already thinks it is perfect. <laughs> but because you're the artist, you see all the imperfections. And you have to kind of learn to accept those. And that, you know, when you can, you know, it, you just have to accept it and move on. And then each time you do something, you learn a little bit. And next time it gets more and more perfect. And you know, then when you're kind of 82, <laughs> you get to be really, really good. <laughs> and you just sit down and... Whoosh, whoosh. But, you know, it, it comes with time. And you just have to accept these things. OK, Terry, I hope you like that. <laughs> and now I'm going to go on to here. It's some really solarised pictures of Simon here. And... I met Simon last year. <laughs> I, met, I met a lot of people at the Car Fest. If you go and click here, you can see uh, the video I made about Car Fest last year, which was a great big um, event, and uh, with with lots of cars. So the cars there for dads. Well, I mean, I I learned in fact there are lots of mums and lots of ladies that like fast cars and stuff as well. You know, you, you come with these ideas, don't you? And then you find <laughs> that uh, it's not quite what you think. Anyway, what am I trying to say? So I was working with Derwent pencils and showing people all the products and stuff. And, and we had a really, really great weekend. And lots of people came to our little tent that we set up. And one of them was Simon, who was a big fan of my books and so he's 
his mum has asked if he can be drawn on here as a pirate. He's a big Lego fan. He has a Lego um, channel on YouTube. So I'm going to make him look a bit fierce to be a pirate. So he has this kind of wild, unruly um, pirate's hair. And so I'm going to give him a kind of a pirate's hair kind of a cutlass or something like that. Arr. And he would like this to be a seven pound note. A pound or pan. Yeah, we'll have something like that. And then we need to have a skull and crossbones. Ooh, that's a funny shaped bone. Anyway, never mind. And then this is the important bit, I think. Give him wild, unruly hair sticking out. Actually, quite tidy at the back there. I'm going to make him look slightly, I hope not evil, <laughs> a mischievous. That's a pirate. Arr. Captain Simon, and then we want to go to something on there, don't we? A bit of scrambled egg on the side, and then he needs epaulettes or something there. Symbol inside this kind of cartouche. Is that the right word? <laughs> if it isn't, I hope it should be cartouche. Sounds perfect. And I don't know if I said Simon. Is mad on Lego and he kind of reviews Lego stuff on YouTube, even though he's only seven. And I know somebody asked me about uh, this when I did the big picture. They say, How come it didn't curl, the whole picture didn't curl up like watercolor paper does? And well, this is just really thick paper and it's designed for watercoloring and. So because it's so thick, it it I mean, it is trying to curl, but it isn't really. It's not actually curling. It's 300 gram or 140 pound paper, so it really is quite thick, and so it doesn't kind of crinkle like thinner paper would. And um, and so that's why I'm managing to do it. Like this. Oh, I think I've got too much in there now. I'm just gonna just keep working that. Like that. There we are, that's better. I'm going to make this a very dark blue kind of hat that he's wearing. And also I think a dark blue uniform. Uh, I think this will be kind of silverish. Kind of like that. And then... Oh, brown here. Now I'm just choosing colours at random really here because I know I'm going to have to fill up the whole tree. And They're stronger colours than you used before I think. Hmm? That's my mother who's just come in and is watching over my shoulder. <laughs> uh, oh I see. On the air. <laughs> there you are, Simon. I hope you like that. I hope Freddie and Terry, I hope you both like that. And um, I'll be finishing off the rest next week. But don't forget, you can be on this tree. There are five spaces left. Except by the time you're watching this, there probably won't be any at all. So uh, get in there really, really quick. 
<laughs> you are going to be disappointed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, why not go and have a look at another one of my videos or try the mystery drawing. Make sure you're subscribed for new drawings every Monday and Friday. Check out my website, shewainer.com. And why not get my new book, Everyone Can Draw. In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.